finally get it on. Rumbling out of the Nebraska Plains come the Cornhuskers, led by Tommy Frazier and his running mates Amon Green and Lawrence Phillips. They are this year's flag bearers of the Nebraska legacy and the national title. Driven by the steady hand of Tom Osborne, who's not only read the book, he's seen the movie. But swooping out of that desert sky, the high-flying attack of Florida's Danny Warfel and his sure-handed targets Chris Doring and Ike Hilliard. This high-stakes game is new to the Gators, but they figure to go right for the gold up in those hills. Tonight, when the dust settles on this one, we'll finally know who's number one. the sun sets on this college football season, we welcome you to a fan's dream. Two unbeaten teams, number one Nebraska, the reigning national champion, versus number two Florida. Folks, we are about to witness the crowning of a true national champion right here at the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. And they've come from Nebraska, places like Shadron, Omaha, and Lincoln. And they've come from Florida, Bradenton, Jacksonville, and of course, Gainesville to cheer on their beloved team. And if you're a little excited, well, so are we. Because like the great Phoenix tonight, right before our very eyes, one team will rise above them all. Hi again, everybody. I'm Pat O'Brien. And from all of us at CBS Sports, we wish you a happy new year and welcome you to the Four Tours pregame show. Tonight, a game so big, the winner gets two trophies, the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl and the Bowl Alliance's Great Games trophies, and more importantly, college football's undisputed championship. Joining us is the current New York Jets quarterback, Boomer Esaias in the Boomer, the understatement of the year, two offensive powerhouses. Well, two distinct differences here. Nebraska loves to put the ball on the ground. They like to rush, averaging 400 yards a game on the ground. Conversely, Florida's fun and gun. Danny Werfield responsible for 35 touchdown passes and almost 400 yards a game of passing. It's a great scene out here. You know, a month ago, Florida won the SEC, and afterwards, in the locker room, we heard the words, you are going to the big bowl game. One more chance for another championship. January 2nd at the Post Meantime, Gator coach Steve Spurrier is answering the critics who suggest his offense is just Sandlot football brought to the big time. That's probably a compliment if they, if they say that because uh, you can always uh, probably learn something from uh, the Sandlot and uh, and really, the, our offense is pretty simple. I guess back when we were playing uh, down at Qantas Park in Johnson City, if the guy played way deep, you'd say, go down there and hook up in front of him, and I'll hit you. And if he's playing tight, say, I'll, I'll run behind him and throw it down there. And, and really, that's, uh, that's what throwing the ball is. If they play off, you throw in front. If they play tight, you try to throw it over their head. Uh, that's, heck, that's what we try to do. A lot of people have asked, uh, how come uh, if that offense is so good, why didn't somebody go down there and copy it? Well, uh, same thing with the 49er offense. People try to copy it, but you can't really copy coaches. Uh, I think uh, individually, the personality of the coach has to go into whatever he's trying to teach his team. And, and that's the reason. We have coaches from all over the country come down here every spring. Uh, there's the tapes. That's what we do. Go look at it. And they all look at them. Oh, I like this play. I like that play. Uh, and then you see them play the next year. They don't run those plays. They, 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 it doesn't work for them for some reason or another. Well, there he is, and Boomer, it's not exactly go down to the tree and turn right, right? I think Coach Spurrier is understating it a little bit. It is a high-flying attack. It's very sophisticated. You have to have confidence in your quarterback, and you cannot duplicate it by going down there. You have to believe in the system. You have to have the guts and the confidence to run it, and certainly Coach Spurrier has that. He's looking at that pent-up energy down there. Defending national champion Nebraska just keeps rolling. They've won 24 in a row and have a chance to become the first team to win back-to-back -back championships in 16 years. But there was controversy. A number of off the field incidents, including one involving that man right there, star running back Lawrence Phillips, who pleaded no contest to assaulting his former girlfriend. Nebraska coach Osborne originally suspended Phillips, then reinstated him, and now has named him the starting eye back for tonight's game. It has forced a conversation that has little to do with football, but a lot to do with character. I spoke with Phillips and I asked him when he thought the attention would stop. 
Uh, I don't think I don't think there's anything I can do personally. I think that uh, media is going to do what they have. I mean, whatever. I think those type of stories sell papers. People like to hear about people who are high up, uh, kind of get uh, getting cut down. So I, that type of stuff sells. So I think the media is going to keep writing about it. But you understand why the stories are there. I mean, you have been, you know, accused of something. Of, yeah. You, know, you understand that part. Yep. Do you think you got off easier than? Somebody else might have in Lincoln, Nebraska. No, nah, I don't think so. Another African American in Lincoln, Nebraska would have had the same sentence, you think? Uh, I believe so. I believe that uh, he would have had to just go to court and that would have been it. And he would have had to deal with a lot of other things that uh, I had to deal with. I heard you say that you learned to control your anger in 95. How did you do that? Just by uh, going to counseling and just uh, getting advice from them and how to, how to control it, talking about things. and, and uh, basically just learn how to talk things out. How are you going to decide on whether to go to the NFL? Well, there's a lot of things, uh, performance in this game, talking to the NFL committee and, and uh, finding out where they think I'll go, talking to foster parents what they think and stuff like that. Truth be told, that man right there, Tom Osborne, has actually welcomed the opportunity to talk candidly about this incident, saying the truth never hurts. He acknowledges his team's problems, but always emphasizes its successes. Well, I, I would hope uh, that, that uh, the test of time would show that we've run a good program. And I've been there 33 years. We've never had a major NCAA uh, uh, problem of any kind. We've never missed a game on TV or a bowl game or anything. And so we've had a good reputation that way. Academically, we've done well. We had an 85% graduation rate, one of the top six in the CFA. And this year's rate will be about the same. We've had 45 academic All-Americans. The next school is 35 nationally. And so we hope we've done some good things and uh, won't just be remembered for uh, four or five incidents over a period of four years. The Lawrence Phillips thing, um, do you feel like it's at this point overshadowing uh, some of your other accomplishments that just continues to be brought up? Well, I, I don't feel that way personally and I certainly hope not. I think Lawrence has uh, done everything we ask him to do and uh, you know there's two approaches. One, you can you can abandon people, you can jettison them, and, uh, and some people think you need to send a message that way. And the other, the other way to deal with it is to uh, have them own up to what they did, to take responsibility for their actions, and then do some things to correct uh, the behavior. And in Lawrence's case, I felt that he did have a problem with anger, and he really needed to address it, and he's done that. And uh, so we're really pleased with his response, and how people perceive it, we can't control. Yeah. You're such a strong figure in Lincoln. Uh, a lot of I don't know if it's criticism, but a lot of talk has been through all this and through some of the other players, is that you have been sort of above the law, that you've taken the law into your own hands. You've heard that. Uh -huh. I've not interfered with any witnesses. I haven't gone out on the streets and tried to find people. Whoever's talked to me has come to me. And uh, so I don't feel at all that I'm above the law. I'm subject to the same scrutiny, same laws as everyone else. And uh, sometimes uh, what the criminal justice system does is not really uh, in the same line of thinking what you have to do as a coach. And uh, so we want our players to take responsibility, want them to make changes, want them to be good citizens. But uh, if, you, if you let the criminal justice system run its course, sometimes you're tying things up for two and three and four years. And uh, maybe that says something about the criminal justice system. On to football. When we come back, we'll meet the quarterbacks as we roll on live from Sun Devil Stadium. Stay with us.